Hey everyone, I've been shooting quite a bit lately and I've been getting to edit a whole bunch of different types of stuff, color grading different types of shots, some that are a bit more creative than others. And I just wanted to go over my process with you and see if you can pick up a few different pointers. There's a million different ways to do the same thing. It's always nice to see someone else's process. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so for this one, I just wanted to do a couple little tweaks. I think is going to be a good representation of how much detail we can pull out of Capture One. It's um, very powerful of a software. I think it's something that's heard in a lot of different tutorials on YouTube. We hear this um, a lot about this piece of software, that it's very powerful. So let's just kind of put it to the test. Like we have a lot of detail that doesn't look bad. You know, like I know you can pull detail back up in Lightroom, but you get like an extra two stops of light in Capture One versus Lightroom. For some reason, it's just better at reading those ones and zeros from your raw file. So let's just edit it normally for this one here. I think it's a little cold. I don't have the shot of my gray card, unfortunately, so I can't make it perfect here for you guys. But for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna say that that's close enough to a perfect white balance here. I do wish this shot was a little bit wider, but we were literally in the back lot of the building and um, we just had to make do with what we had. And we weren't sure if the car was gonna have plates on it and insurance, so we weren't even allowed to drive it around. That was kind of what we had to do and what we had to deal with. Yeah, this is the first all electric dump truck in Canada, which is pretty neat from Daimler Trucks and Ryzen Automotive. A really fun little shoot. It was, only, it was mostly a lifestyle shoot where we were, we were talking about, uh, we were showing how it works and all that and basically had to shoot the lifestyle of what was happening. But we ended up taking a couple quick little product shots of the, the vehicle itself in the back, which was neat. Brought me back to how I started in photography back in the day. More like this for 2025, please. So I don't quite like the uh, blue that's happening on the truck though I don't want to lose it too much in the sky so we'll probably help bring it back with like a little bit of a vignetting or something here a little bit more like that here let's take here a another radial mask or just like a general pop here I'm just very subtly directing where we want the eye of our viewer to go M or no not M uh, is it uh, R no, is it L? Oh, it's L. It is L. <laughs> so if we take L again here, drag up from the bottom. This is something I used to do back in my uh, car editing days for sure. Make that floor darker. Add some contrast. Maybe add some clarity. Now it looks like every meat shot I ever took. All right, so there we go. So it's starting to look pretty good. Let's go ahead here and let's add another layer mask. I'm going to just draw with the brush tool here instead. Let's show my mask here. There we go. That's pretty okay. And then I'll just take the eraser tool and just fine it, fine tune my edge here. Doesn't need to be perfect. If anything, I want it to be more feathered so that you can't really tell what's going on. So let's see here. If I take off the mask, we'll do invert. And now if I, oops, nope, wrong one. Invert again. There we go. So, so that's obviously not what we want. We don't want it to make the blacks brighter or else it's going to look weird. Um, but if I crank my contrast up, keep those blacks black and just bring up my, there we go. There we go. There we go. I can even go down on the saturation a little bit because it looks like it's reflecting a bit of the surroundings, which I don't necessarily need. Give it a bit of clarity here. And before and after, you wouldn't remember where we started. Look at that, that's cool. All right, cool. So now it's really like shining. You would have needed a whole other flash just for that. This worked out pretty well. This is actually just before my assistant came and shot the front of the truck with flash. So um, if anything, I think I like this shot a little bit more. It's a little bit more natural this way. Uh, granted, we do have two 8600s that are blasting the left side of the truck for this, but still. The front of the truck is still looking a little blue to me. So we're just gonna go one more layer mask here. And this time we're just gonna draw here. And then I'm just gonna find my edge here a little bit because there's still some blue in the sky that I don't want to lose. You know, this is this was technically dusk. We were starting to get cooler light that's late in the, late in the afternoon. I mean, granted, I think it was like two o'clock in the afternoon, but it was shot like in January. So, you know, it is what it is. But if I hit M here and now I go down to my blues and I just desaturate them. There we go. Let's make it a little bit less obvious here. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe we can remove it a little bit on the wheels here as well. Looks like everything that was gray is turning out a little bluish. I think as a viewer, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to forget that that was not there. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's bring it back a little bit in the sky, in the, in the windshield here. I think it looks weird not in the windshield. So we're just going to pop open that mask again, remove that opacity down a little bit. So it's a bit more subtle. Boom. Let's do that. There we go. In the last three to five minutes, however long it took me to edit and chop this down, we went from that to this. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. That's fun. 
Let's move on to the next one. So this next shot here, we did a couple little tweaks that would help it make it look like it's even further out of town than it really is. Uh, this is just like five minutes outside of the city. There's another hiker in the background. There's this little hiking marker over here and obviously like the street and the houses right up in the distance. I feel like if we remove those, we'll be able to uh, really just kind of make it look like they're in the middle of nowhere. We were doing a scouting mission for a shoot that I did the following week and I ended up hiking this with like a bunch of models, which was incredible. But yeah, cool, cool little spot here in, uh, here in Victoria. Let's just take that healing brush, see if we can get rid of those houses, yeah, there we go, pretty simple. I know you can do this in pretty much any software here, but we're just gonna go through the power of Capture One here. I always think it's pretty important to see workflows about the, of different people because, you know, there's a, a thousand different ways to do the same thing. It's just interesting to see sometimes how one person approaches a problem and then you can be like, oh, maybe I'll do it this way or maybe I can use a little bit of what they do with a little bit of what I do and mix it all together. And I mean, that's basically what I've done. It's like a nice mixture of, you know, best of both worlds. I can't teach you to look at the image and to dissect what needs to be removed and what needs to be edited and stuff like that. That's something that you develop for yourself. The editing stuff, like it's gonna be weird at the start if you're not used to this kind of stuff, but it shouldn't be hidden from you is what I mean. Because like, this is the story of a girl. not difficult stuff, okay? It's just pushing sliders. I know some people get mad at me and some people make a whole living on editing and that's cool for the purpose of being a photographer. If you can make the images at least look good, it's good enough. You don't need to know every corner of of the piece of software to consider yourself an editor. I'm just kind of going through the things that I use for my images. So for this one here, actually it's fun to be able to do something that's a little bit more creative, let's say, because for the advertising stuff that I shoot for the most part, it needs to kind of look the way that it's actually gonna look in reality. Whereas with this, we can have a little bit of fun with it. So I think we're just going to, um, we're just gonna see what we, can, uh, what we can do with the shot here and just kind of push the program a little bit, unlike how I normally edit, let's say. We'll do something a little bit different than usual, is what I mean. Like, see here, like between the levels and the curves, I'm about to do the same thing here. So with the levels and the curves like this, what I find is interesting is that, you know, it's two ways to do the same thing and I'm just adding it on top of itself as if it's like a second layer doing the same thing. Very slightly different way, but it's basically achieving the same result. And it's just like doubling that result by doing it this way. I have a tiny bit of detail in the shadows that I'd like to recover there. That should be pretty decent. Maybe play a little bit on the saturation here of those greens. Remind us that we're out in the forest. I don't do this very often. I mean, I feel like I used to do this maybe when I was first starting out a lot more, but um, because I don't shoot this kind of stuff anymore, I don't really ever do this, but desaturating your yellows and um, increasing the lightness of them is a fun little hack for, not hack, but it's like, it looks cool usually for like cityscapes and for landscapes and things like that. Oftentimes you can make a pretty cool effect, but it can very easily and quickly get overused. So this, I mean, whatever, like I'm not using this image for anything. So I just figured I'd do it for this shot here. It looks kind of neat. Her hat is a little distracting to me. Uh, let's go here. Let's see what color it actually is. See, I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh... A lot less saturated here, there we go. So for me, it's Windows or Option. You can just hit the before and after and it shows you just that one tool. That's pretty neat. Let's just go here, let's give it um, a little bit of a, and give that shadow about a 180 out, like that. And then give this guy up somewhere here, boom. So if I go before and after with that, that tool, just made it a little bit cooler, a little bit more woodsy. Go back down and remove these guys a little bit here and increase a little bit of the warmth and the highlights. Life back in those skin tones, and there we go. Uh, maybe give it a little bit of a vignette. Actually, you know what? We're gonna do it with keyboard shortcut as T, I believe. Um, at least it is for me. <laughs> what we're gonna do here for it is just give it a more personalized vignette. Et voila. So, now if we look at the shot before and after, see what we came up with. There we go, just had a little bit more fun with it, and uh, now it really looks like they're in the middle of nowhere, so. That's pretty neat. All right, so next shot here, we've got a shot I took with Chef Steph over here. We're going to crop it in a little bit, so I don't really worry about the background, but we're gonna give this a little bit of life. It almost looks like a, it reminds me of like a log file because it's, uh, I shot this with a mirror, so the mirror is kind of filling in a lot of those shadows and it's giving us this kind of two-sided look, but it's giving us all of these beautiful little catch lights on the food, which is what I was going for. So we're going to rely a little bit on editing to bring back all of that life here like this, um, which, you know, you can, purists can hate me for, but this is what we're, uh, shooting with the intention of editing is also part of the process. And, um, I think that the more you know of both, the better it is. It's just that editing always takes time and time is better suited 
getting more clients and shooting more often because that's what pays us more often. So the less you need to spend editing, the, the usually the better it's going to end up being. And if sure, of course, if you have the budgets, we can we can always uh, get editors and we can get other people to uh, edit for us. But realistically, like that's not always. Majority of us as photographers have to edit our own work. It's very rare. It takes a long time in your career before you start getting getting editors and you needing editors because it's like. I'm just gonna take the 10 minutes to edit the shot myself. What are you talking about? I would also say that like editing to me, like I only ever off shoot my like retouching and the tedious stuff. The color grading like this that we're doing here is usually me anyway. Even if like I get, not even usually, I think it's always, well, no, isn't me if the client pays for it and they do it themselves. Like the Uber Eats stuff, they do it themselves and that's fine. But anything that is like handled through me or that I post or that I shoot or showcase is usually at least graded from me. Again, this, I don't have the gray card photo, so I can't really reference the perfect gray right now. So pardon me if it's not a perfectly white shot, but I already gave it a lot more life there. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and just remove these guys over here. This is something that I used to always just rely on Photoshop for, but um, like, look, it's perfectly good here in Capture One at uh, removing these things. And sometimes here, like an edge, it's gonna have a bit of a harder time, I would imagine. Whoops, where, uh, my mouse just glitched out there. It might have a harder time on the edge, so I'll give it its own. I'll give it. A, I'll give it its own fighting chance here. Let's see how it. Let's see how it does it. Uh, What about this one? Better. What about like here? I prefer. All right, get rid of that thing. Hey, sometimes it does this where it's like, if you have to select like inside another selection, it's like kind of stupid. There we go. Okay, that's cool. That's just like natural part of the, uh, of the actual plate. Boom, I'm happy with that. And um, I hope Steph is happy with that too. Anyway, I hope you got a little kick out of watching this and got a few little extra pointers, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have a good weekend and I will see you in a couple days. Later.